Good morning, everyone. So it's a, a frozen morning this morning again. And uh, a few days ago, actually, the birdies started to come. They usually sit on that bush here and uh, waiting for food because this is where we usually have the uh, birdhouse. And so I didn't put that up yet. I just put some food on the on the terrace here. And today I'm on the way to get the birdhouse, but I will do a detour through the garden with you so you can see how it looks frozen, what our state is with uh, or status with cleaning up. Uh, I'll show you how it looks at the moment. And also, um, this is um, an unknown visitor in our garden. We don't know where the cat belongs to. Um, I think it's an, a neighbor's cat. Looks very well taken care of. Oh, where did it go here? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, probably joining us on the garden tour this morning. So let's go. <laughs> so I just noticed that there's actually one plant that I forgot to replant. Uh, we took that one out from just back there and put this one um, Japanese holly in there. It's like bush kind of shape. And this one was supposed to get a new home. But um, <laughs> I just put it there on a uh, pot and I forgot to plant it. So now it's sitting there. Hopefully it will be fine. At the moment I cannot plant because it's frozen solid. So that will have to wait. Let's um, continue. So we have had the plan this year to actually let all the leaves fall and then clean up at the end. So do one huge cleanup. Not like last year where we cleaned up sections, you know, as soon as the leaves were falling, we cleaned up that bit, then the next bit. This year we thought, okay, let's wait until everything drops and then let's clean up. That didn't happen though, because, and let's keep talking, uh, walking whilst I talk, um, because the weather started changing and it went from really nice autumn weather to a lot of rain suddenly. And this is why nothing actually has been cleaned up because we have most of the time rain. There was not really snow yet. We have a, a tiny bit like you saw in the last video, but that's that's it for now. And there's no forecast either. So, and because everything is uh, really soaking wet and now frozen most of the time, we can't clean it up. So we'll have to wait for warmer weather to come to do that. Um, here, I want to show you the azaleas because I think I mentioned that in one of the previous videos that they are um, semi evergreen. That means they lose about 50% of their leaves in winter. And this is why they look at the moment a bit, um, what's the word, like sparse, so they do not have a lot of leaves on. But uh, that's normal for those azaleas. They will grow new leaves again in springtime. So whether they do this or not, this depends on the cultivar and also on the climate zone they're grown in. For us, most of the azaleas actually lose about half of their leaves in winter. Let's, um, oh no, uh, yeah, let's walk through here and I'll show you the, the moss. This here you see, um, the first maple where we didn't clean up with the first maples here. We even have the, uh, so leaves are on the ground and we even have the leaves on the, on the trees. I was saying last year that normally I clean that off and this is the first year I actually haven't done that. And now some of them come off, but others are like frozen on. So uh, I will just leave it for this, for the moment and then clean them off as soon as possible. And you can actually see if you look here, the frozen water drops because during the day we have um, temperatures just slightly above zero or slightly above 32 Fahrenheit and then it freezes again in the afternoon and during the night and then the, the water drops start to freeze on the trees. So you can see here all the moss that is also um, frozen over uh, during the nights and in the mornings and looking down here um, you see my footsteps from walking and the moss gets squished, of course, uh, now that it's frozen and it stays like that for a little bit. But moss is very resistant to uh, being walked on, so it doesn't really matter. So it will uh, start to stand up again over time. So this doesn't do any damage to the moss. And you see, um, looking along here, this slight um, white cover. This is all uh, a bit of frost on the moss. And you hear it even a bit when you, when you walk. It's a bit um, crunchy, <laughs> it sounds. Um, back here, I wanted to show you the, some more azaleas. And this is a good example of a rhododendron back there where the leaves are curled in. So let's go a bit closer. So this is how it looks when it's frozen for a rhododendron. And they do this in order to reduce the water loss because they're evergreen. So this is um, 
not um, a sign of the plant has any uh, damage or any, any disease or anything. This is just uh, how rhododendron look in winter when it's frozen. So as soon as it um, starts to um, get warmer again, the leaves will roll out, roll out again and um, look normal like they normally do. Behind me you can see an area that looks quite messy, at least for us in our terms. Normally we would not leave the garden like this, but um, there's, you know, there's um, uh, an advantage and a disadvantage to cleaning up leaves or not cleaning up leaves in uh, autumn time. So for normally, if you have like flower beds, for example, or you want to protect plants from frost, it's actually a good thing to leave uh, the leaves around the plants because it uh, gives a natural um, compost over time, a natural fertilizer really. Also, it protects the ground from freezing unless it freezes really a lot, then it will not. But um, it's a natural uh, protection uh, and cover and um, fertilizer for the plants. We usually clean everything up in winter because we try to encourage moss growth uh, everywhere in the garden and for the moss it's actually not ideal to be covered with leaves. So in autumn usually when the leaves are starting to fall we leave it for a little bit, you know, whilst they look nice with the colors um, because it gives a beautiful picture but then once the leaves start to turn brown and dry completely we start to clean it up like in case you're watching our channel on a regular basis you've seen in videos from last year. And so as I said this year we um, didn't get around to doing it because of the sudden change in weather and now we'll just have to leave it like that and uh, wait until it gets warmer because the the um, the issue with the moss is when it's frozen and you pull the leaves off you may sacrifice actually too much of the moss uh, because it's you see it's all frozen together and you just start to rip out the moss as well so this is why we say okay no we rather leave it at the moment as it is and uh, clean up as soon as the weather gets better. But you see here, you see this is not frozen underneath, just from that little bit of uh, leaf cover. You see the difference? See it's green and that's like the frozen moss here. So let's cover that again. In this little area here you can see um, only evergreen plants and this is why it's completely clean so nothing uh, fell off and also maybe if you remember from previous videos we used to have ivy on this tree and that tree there which used to make a huge mess uh, all year round really and now look haha it's all clean that's amazing because the ivy is gone <laughs> and now i'll show you an example of the pathway that hasn't been cleaned up walking this way Look also here, all the frozen water drops on the cedar here, look. So it doesn't stay um, above zero long enough during the day, so they just start to melt and freeze again. So here we have the next um, messy area where we have leaves from the orange trim maple that are also not cleaned off enough, frozen on. <laughs> and from the uh, ginkgo and this is another reason why we usually clean up in uh, autumn time because we have so many pathways in the garden and you see this is how it looks when the um, leaves are just uh, stay on the pathway so you can barely see it also it tends to get you know the frozen leaves they tend to get slippery which is uh, not ideal either for walking in the garden over winter here i want to show you the uh, nandina domestica or sacred bamboo because this year all of them have so many berries. So they have in um, summertime little white blossoms and then in winter they develop these berries. I think I mentioned this in previous videos and now you can see it because this gives a really nice uh, touch of color for the winter and they stay on until spring even. And then in late spring they turn brown and then fall off or I usually cut them off. But so you have this in case you're growing those or planning on growing those, you have this um, red, uh, berries on there all winter long. No, it's a slippery, so <laughs> um, the bridge is way too slippery at the moment. Um, 
it's normally when it just rains it's okay but uh, this bit here you see I'm looking at my my foot here how much I slip so I'm not even gonna try and uh, in case you've seen the snow garden tour from last year <laughs> we had some trouble also getting over the bridge but this is really icy so I'm gonna uh, walk on the side here climbing through the rocks So I backtracked into the stream, the dry stream, uh, to show you these irises here. Um, I just noticed that this is really interesting because it stays so warm these days until late in the year. Um, they actually start to, to grow out again, which normally is the case in springtime. And um, this is the first time this year that I see this with the, the irises growing here in the stream. Because I keep seeing this on uh, pond plants in the last years that in late autumn they start to grow again because the water doesn't um, freeze early enough. Now you can see in the background the water is frozen and given the temperatures it will probably stay like that for a while. Um, normally when the temperatures start to go up the water doesn't necessarily um, or the ice doesn't necessarily melt. It depends a little bit um, but that's fine for the for the pond that it's frozen um, all winter long. This is the uh, lantern from our profile picture. <laughs> all frozen look the moss on there. Very sweet. <laughs> And now I want to show you on some maples how many seeds stay on there. You can see once the leaves have fallen, um, the seeds that remain because the seeds usually stay on until spring. And this year that's the Osaka Suki maple. And look how many seeds it has this year. It's incredible. I don't think it ever had that many. So there are some cultivars that always produce a lot of seeds, others none or just very few. And this one is, I think, has the most seeds uh, this year. Let's walk through here to the birdhouse. Here we have Japanese irises. Also, those are not uh, cut for this year. So I usually just put the leaves together a bit like that um, to protect them. Actually, those I typically leave until spring anyway to uh, you know keep the new uh, shoots warm and to protect them over the winter. Oh, and here, <laughs> this is we have one rose in the garden which is obviously not uh, for Japanese garden, not typical for Japanese garden, but that rose was from the previous owners. It has been uh, transplanted several times actually by us. Um, it must be a very old rootstock. And look, uh, it blooms always until late October, November even, depending on weather. And look how many blossoms are now still on there, frozen now, but it's so, so beautiful. So we really like this one. This is why we uh, left it there. Now here we have the quince that we pruned the other day and there was actually one uh, comment about the quince growing out from rootstock and that's right so when you have quinces they they will of course grow out from where you cut but also they tend to get wider over time so this one originally wasn't that wide because they they grow out from the uh, roots underneath and they will start to have shoots um, coming straight up so if you're planning on growing quinces keep in mind that they will get wider over time now let's walk around here it looks here. quite spacious here now actually it is with everything behind you it is and they transplanted uh, bushes over there yes it is very spacious now and this gives us loads of room and ideas for the coming year for a landscape design project here i'm excited about that and yeah that's the hedge we transplanted where we recycled all these plants so they are doing well all frozen now as well and now let's walk in here i don't think you've ever seen that view actually so that's coming to our little garden shed from the like back side that's an old um mahogany that has very beautiful yellow blossoms in spring i'm going to show you next year don't let me forget um growing rather like long and low because it has not that much light here, but you see it grows out towards you, towards the light. And this is where we uh, store the birdhouse during the year. So let me get that. It's still there. This actually is, let me put this down, wow, a good example of 
um, a not ideal situation here with the azaleas. So all these Japanese azaleas here are covered by maple leaves and normally, especially the azaleas, we clean off because they seem more um, sensitive in general, I find, at least here in our climate. Um, so, but this year we didn't. Um, and so as soon as it um, unfreezes, <laughs> or as soon as the temperature... Doors. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're gonna clean those off so they get light. Um, otherwise, you see these uh, leaves covering them. So the, the, the shoots or the leaves that are on there because they're evergreen plants, they don't really get any light. So that's not ideal. And also the path where here you can see it's all full, but um, and also the, the boxwood here, even though that actually I find looks very pretty with the frozen leaves on there. This path we'd normally clean out, wouldn't we? Yes, we would. In fact, this whole area, I'm Everything just gonna... Normally. Hang like on. it was last no. year, it was so clean, the garden. Um, really everything was completely neat and tidy. We kept saying we never had it that clean actually in, um, in autumn time. And uh, this year is the complete opposite. But it's all, you know, an experiment and brings new experience. So it's uh, a good thing that it's not the same every year. Now, let me keep walking with the birdhouse. So here, I'm doing another stop, I want to show you, look again, the, the water uh, droplets that are frozen on these maples here. That's so beautiful. And down here, the frozen moss. You see, that's the uh, fern moss that grows here. You see, when I touch it, it's all one frozen layer. And here, also the frozen bamboo, you see? <laughs> It's all um, steady and one frozen thing doesn't move. Normally it moves. So that's the uh, clumping bamboo that we grow here for the edge. Uh, and back here, we have the, uh, the Tsukubai, so the water basin. Also with the uh, frozen water in there. Oh, and here the frozen grass as well. <laughs> So let's continue to the up to the terrace to feed the birdies finally. And then here before I go up, have a look at all the, the beautiful frozen moss. So you see green with the white kind of layer of frost on top. So now we're finally uh, have the birdhouse up here on the terrace again. We feed them sunflower seeds with peel because that's the only thing they eat, we found over the years. And if I put in mixed foods, they're gonna be picking out just the sunflower seeds. So here you go, birdies, that's your food. We do not have any pheasants yet this year, but hopefully they'll come soon. I'm gonna put some food down there as well for them. And um, that brings me to the end of this video. We wish you, so Adam and I wish you a happy Christmas and a happy new year and uh, make sure you keep checking out our channel for upcoming videos. Thank you so much, bye.